a horticulture agent at the Bullock County Extension Service. We're out here doing a little bit of weed ID. And this guy you see in front of you right here is buckhorn plantain. Um, it's one of the two prevalent plantains in Kentucky. It is an edible plant. If you're into edible plants, just make sure you get it from a clean source. Um, these, uh, these are often found in home lawns and can be taken care of with a broadleaf weed killer. Or you can just dig up the plant if you get it early enough, throw it in a salad and call it done. This is a wild yarrow. It's a white one. Um, yarrow is really important to people that are into medicinal herbs. Uh, has lots of different uses. For me, it's a really nice plant to just have out in a, a great sun area. It does tend to take over and run a little bit, so be very careful where you plant yarrow. Uh, but it's a nice little wild plant to have, and this is a, this is a native one. So um, Right above it, you can kind of see this is a gray dogwood. This is also a native species. It does have a little kind of white clustery flower on it. These are spent already, so you can't really see much um, from that. But um, birds, it does produce a white berry that birds just kind of love in the fall. So it's nice to have around. All right, so this is kind of an ag aggressive non-native called the Multiflora Rose. Um, it's one that was brought in to be used as a fence row, like a natural fence row for farmers. And unfortunately, extension played a part in encouraging that in the early days before we realized that it's rather aggressive and will kind of take over. Uh, it has a nice little kind of a, a white or pinkish bloom, um, does have a slight fragrance, but for the most part, it's just ugly briars that kind of get into everything and cause a nuisance. If you, if you look closely and you notice that this one is a little white dusted, um, it's because it's already started suffering from um, environmental issues, and this is a powdery mildew infection. So powdery mildew kind of comes in in high humidity situations and puts this white powdery looking film on the leaves. Um, it doesn't brush off though, so if you come and try to brush it off, it's not gonna, it's not gonna affect it at all. Um, but powdery mildew affects a lot of different species. So if you see this on one of your plants, this is probably what you're dealing with. Okay, so growing in amongst the poison ivy and clover, right here you can see common ragweed. Um, this is one of the two ragweeds that mess with your sinuses. And get okay, so we're looking on the side of the road here. And the side of the road is a great place to find this particular plant that is often mistaken for a dandelion. So if you look very closely, this is a rosette, um, which means the, the leaves all grow along the ground in kind of a circle from one growing point, which is what a dandelion does. And the leaves look very similar, but this is not a dandelion. This is chicory. Um, it's a biennial, so the first year it grows in a rosette, very similar to the dandelion, and the second year it puts up a flower spike. And this has been introduced as a, a herb from people's tea gardens because uh, chicory was used as a coffee substitute or, or tea. And so you often find chicory on disturbed sites. So the side of the road is a really great place to find it. So this little plant right here is another one that you're going to find on roadsides. And he's a little road dust covered, so don't mind that. Um, but this little guy's called pineapple weed, and it's, it smells like pineapple. So if you crush it a little bit in your fingers and then smell your hand, it's going to smell like pineapples. And this one's really common in highly compacted soils, and so you find it a lot on the side of the road, right in the leeway where people pull their cars over. So, so this guy right here, uh, what we're looking at, is a common milkweed. Um, they have a big, showy, globe-like purple flower. Uh, butterfly larvae love these guys, and so do butterflies, but mostly the larvae. They'll come and eat the plant. Um, this is really important for monarch populations and other butterflies to encourage milkweeds of all kinds. Uh, and this is probably one of the prettier ones for homeowners, and it is a perennial. So when you see these guys, if, if it's in an area where you typically mow, 
if you could transplant those to an area where you don't typically mow, I'm sure the butterflies would thank you. So this right here, this plant right here is water hemlock. Um, it's a poisonous plant. This is the flower. It's kind of pretty. Uh, wouldn't recommend eating it. <laughs> um, it's very, very toxic. I wouldn't have it around wildlife either, although um, domestic animals and things generally know not to eat it. Um, right underneath it, if you look closely, you can see bane of homeowners existence everywhere. Uh, this is poison ivy. You can see that on the, the new growth, the newer leaves that have come out are kind of a russet color. It's kind of a reddish brown. That's pretty normal. Um, the apex where the leaves meet, if you can see real close here, it's kind of a purplish red color. That's pretty normal too. As they get larger, they'll turn more greenish. Um, it has a red fall color. Um, birds love the berries, so they will eat them and deposit your poison ivy everywhere, which is no fun for anybody. This little uh, flower we have here, sometimes it's white. Um, it could be kind of a purplish pink as well, and it has a little yellow center. This is called a fleabane daisy, and you can see the leaves going up the stem here. It used to be used as a flea treatment, um, so you could make a tea with it and treat your animals for fleas. I'm not sure how effective it is. Probably not very, <laughs> or people would still be using it. Um, but it's a nice little wildflower you see all around. It's very common. Um, you see this even in the city areas, urban areas, um, all the way out through the country.